Okay friends, let's talk about this uh, plate tectonics and the spreading ridge system. If you remember in the earlier class we were talking about this oceanic ridge system, the accretionary plate margin where the magma is generated which is theolitic basalt or it is olivine theolite and uh, depending upon this eruption level, depending upon the degree of partial melting and depending upon this magma mixing and mingling within that magma chamber with the adjacent magma chamber, the resultant magmatic eruption is defined. And that is why there is a variation of magmatic composition among different ridges and within a ridge at different parts. And uh, today we will talk about the slow and fast spreading ridges. Though if you remember we were talking about this slow and fast spreading ridges, some of the ridges are slow spreading and some of the ridges are fast spreading and among one ridges there are different segments they are showing different rate of spreading. And the rate of spreading is defining the geology, geomorphology, geochemistry, geophysics, anything which is related to this uh, um, earth sciences that is defined by this uh, rate of spreading. So, now the question arises how to define that which mediocenic ridge is fast spreading and which one is slowly spreading, what is the cutoff? So, is there any numerical value which define this fast to slow spreading ridges? So, here if you see the mediocenic ridge system, this is the map given worldwide and that map we have already discussed and if you see this color representation of different rate of spreading at different parts and here some numerical values are given. The ultra fast ridge which is more than 12 centimeter per annum. If you see here this 12 centimeter per annum it is lying somewhere here and this region it is representing the ultra fast spreading ridges that is part of the East Pacific rise is representing the ultra fast spreading ridge system. Then comes to fast spreading ridge that is 12 to 8 centimeter per annum. 12 to 8 centimeter per annum that means it is rising or it is lying here. So, if you see this color code it is yellow and some part of here some part up here. So, they are representing the fast spreading ridges. Then intermediate spreading ridges that is 5 to 8 centimeter per annum. 5 to 8 centimeter that means here it is intermediate spreading ridges and the color code is here. These are the intermediate spreading ridges. Then slow spreading ridges less than 5 or 2 to 5 centimeter per annum. So, you are represented here and ultra slow spreading ridges that is less than 2 centimeter per year. So, you can say here it is ultra slow spreading ridges somewhere here and some of them are here. So, that is why this cutoff for slow to fast, fast to intermediate, intermediate to slow and ultra slow it lies based on this value or numerical value given. Fast spreading ridge the example is the East Pacific rise and slow spreading ridge mid Atlantic ridge and ultra slow spreading ridge that is the southwest Indian ocean ridge. Now, the difference in the spreading rate give rise to distinct mid oceanic ridge morphologies. So, here we have a comparison of different morphologies of different mid oceanic ridge system. So, the faulting it is more prevalent on fast spreading ridge than the slow spreading ridge and accounts for the vast majority of its relief. So, the relief along this mid oceanic ridge system it is mostly defined by the faulting. The fault throws the difference between this uh, um, upthrown and downthrown blocks and the width of this upthrown and uh, downthrown blocks that means you can say the separation of faults they all together de defining the topography of this uh, mid oceanic ridge system. Both inward and outward facing faults they are found at the 
fast spreading ridges. However, at the slow spreading ridges, only we have least strict normal faults, we have back tilted blocks they are found. If you see here, we have slow spreading ridges that is the mid Atlantic ridge, we are getting the least strict normal faults that is back tilted block. And back tilted block has its own importance when we will talk about relative velocity measurement, this back tilted blocks as well as this inward and outward facing faults, they have major role. Because some of this relative velocity along this plate boundary, it is compensated by the faulting. For example, suppose this mid oceanic ridge is moving this way, but we have a fault, it is back tilted. So, suppose this fault is like this. So, that means this block is coming back. Similarly, this block, this whole total system is moving back, moving in this way, but due to faulting, again part of this block is coming back. So, that calculating this relative velocity along this plate boundary, the role of these faults are immense. And this due to this inward and outward facing fault development, we will able to find the host and gravens along this fast spreading ridges. However, contrast to that, we have a central graven at the slow spreading ridges and we have the faults having high throw and the distance is also more because the frequent of fault frequency of faulting here it is more as compared to here. So, that is why closely placed faults showing inward and outward facing surface you are confined here and here this region is defined by slow faulting and uh, wider fault blocks and high fault throws. At sparse spreading ridges, the bathymetry it is greatly increases from the abyssal plane to the ridge and rises up to around 500 meter. If you see this figure representing the bathymetry of this East Pacific rise. So, gradually you are moving up and this is the mean sea level and gradually you are coming here and this bathymetry is gradually increasing from the surrounding ocean floor and it is rising around 0 0.5 kilometer. So, that is around 500 meter it is moving up. And the bathymetry and of this subdued by this volume of this lava flow erupted along the ridge axis. So, how much this bathymetry will be controlled that depends upon the how much magma flow. And in the fast spreading ridges, we have magma flow which is continuous and heavy magma flow is there. So, once the magma flow is continuous and heavily magmatic flow is there, that is why we are getting a relatively smooth topography because it is basaltic magma. In basaltic magma, it is less viscous. So, it is flowing continuously and this flow is very smooth. That is why we are getting very smooth topography as compared to this uh, slow spreading ridges. And at fast spreading ridges, the high may rise due to the buoyancy of the hot rock with it at the shallow depth. So, this topographic height, it is may be due to the presence of a magma chamber and due to the high temperature buoyancy. Once we are providing the temperature, high temperature in, around this, rock of this surrounding area will expand and this expansion will increase the buoyancy of these rocks. That is why we are getting a topography which is relatively higher than the surrounding. Then the classic example of the fast spreading ridge is the East Pacific rise around 9 degree north latitude, where the spreading rate is about 10 centimeter per annum. And conducted study around this uh, or across this East Pacific rise, mostly the seismic studies, seismic refraction studies, it says that this crust is slightly thinner than it is encountered in the main ocean basin and that is why the upper mantle velocity beneath the crystal region is anomalously low and this low velocity zone extend to a depth of around 100 of kilometer. If you see this figure which is representing this study, if you see here we have seismic profiles and these are the velocity uh, contours. Now, you see along this axis, this velocity is less and this low velocity zone 
around this axis it is going around a depth of around 100 of kilometer. So, here just only x y is given. So, if this is the z scale, so this low velocity zone it is extending up to hundreds of kilometer along this mid ocean crease system. Hot spot or this possible of source for this low velocity or low density region may be due to this three regions. What is the three regions? One is the thermal expansion of this upper mantle material beneath the ridge crest. So, now you see we have this upper mantle material and we have a magma chamber which is continuously supplying heat. So, rocks are expanded. So, that is why due to this thermal expansion of this mantle material, so this type of uh, low velocity zone is uh, expected and it is followed by contraction of the sea floor spreading which is carried away this mid oceanic system away from this heat source. Once it is moving away from the heat source, now it is getting contracted. So, that is why this expansion and contraction away from this magma source. So, this may be the one of the reason for which we are getting a higher topography here and we are getting lower velocity zone here. Second thing that the second possibility says the presence of molten material within the anomalous mantle. See molten material, so it will be magma chamber, melt is there, melt lens is there. So, that is why it can give you the low velocity system. Then a temperature related phase change. So, if you see this mantle peridroid which was earlier lying at certain depth, it, had, it was maintained in a particular temperature and pressure regime. Once it is coming to this environment which is low pressure and high temperature environment. So, at high temperature environment probably it is changing a phase which is of uh, uh, lower density minerals are representing there. So, these are the three possible solutions to describe how this low velocity zone along this mid oceanic ridge and along this east pacific rise can be explained. So, the region is bounded by several hundred of meter wide zone of fissuring and up to 10 kilometer of active normal faulting. So, this first spreading ridge I am talking about it is 10 kilometer wide around this is fissuring and active normal faulting and this new volcanic zone or the region of the active crustal accretion zone is confined to the troughs which is roughly 100 meter wide zone and it is 10 meter deep axial depression. So, here if I drawing this topography, so though we are getting this type of rise at the center part we are getting around a trough which is 100 meter wide and around 10 meter deep. That means, it is a very shallow and very uh, you can say very narrow zone of a depression which is filled with magma and that the rate of spreading along this entire length of this EPR is varying from 7 to 17 centimeter per annum and this variation is also due to different rate of spreading and date of different rate of magmatic eruptions. So, all through this East Pacific rise or any mid oceanic ridge system, the rate of spreading is different and the rate of magmatic eruption is also different. Along this East Pacific rise, there is a shallow axial trough where lava are erupted and the topography is subdued due to the larger volume of magmas injected as dikes and lavas erupted along the ridge axis. So, finally, if you see this image, we are getting this east pacific rise in the fast spreading ridge. It is a smooth topography, smooth positive topography around 500 meter up from the surrounding ocean floor and here we have a small depression which is filled with magma and the magma erupts erupting continuously and flowing in both way and finally giving a smooth topography. And the morphology of the intermediate and slow spreading ridge is dramatically different than the fast spreading ridge system. So, here if you see the new volcanic zone is defined by 10 kilometer wide and 0.5 to 2.5 kilometer deep axial gravel 
bounded by inward dipping normal fault. That is very drastically different from the first bedding ridge. If you remember the first bedding ridges, that is only 100 meter wide zone is was there and 10 meter deep zone was there. But contrast to that, we have 10 kilometer wide zone and around 0.5 to 2.5 kilometer deep zone of graven, which is magma eruption is representing. The region of active faulting up to 50 kilometer wide. So, this 50 kilometer wide, if you can say, if you compare earlier, it was 10 kilometer wide and now I am getting it is 50 kilometer wide and we have different eruptive centers. If you see this magma is coming, it is erupting here, it is erupting here, it is erupting here. So, we have number of eruptive centers also increasing and most of these eruptive centers, if you see, they are away from this ridge axis. So, that means it is a wider zone around 50 kilometer where this magmatic eruption is taking place. And the mid atlantic ridge, this classic example is a slow spreading ridge where the rate of this north atlantic spreading is around 2 centimeter per annum. And the lavas are erupted within the neovolcanic zone and some cases erupted outside of this axial draw. So, that we have discussed that due to this fault this magma can pass through this fault and can erupt here. So, within that 50 kilometer anywhere there is a chance of magmatic eruption. Now, the slowly spreading ridges are formed by coalitions of small volcanoes that is 1 to 2 kilometer wide and hence it is known as axial volcanic zone. Now, if you see this uh, comparison between the fast spreading system and the slow spreading ridge system. Now, the fast spreading ridge system, we have a crystal, we have a magma chamber below and it is continuously magma is being supplied and it is erupting here and we have a slow spreading ridge system where magma is supplied and there are number of normal faults and this magmatic eruption may take place in a wide zone rather it is confined in a narrow zone in the fast spreading ridges. Now, imagine we have a normal fault which is shallow depth and stretching to large distance. And in the crustal level, below this crust, the asthenospheric material, it is under tremendous stress. So, now once we are stretching it, we are thinning the crustal material. So, once we thin this crustal material, so the matter which is lying at the asthenosphere, it will try to move up. So, that is why if you see here, once we have normal faults, shallow depth the normal faults, this mental material which are coming and erupting and near to this um, ridge, ridge system. Similarly, here the mental material is coming and erupting or it is uh, uh, emplacing itself along this mid oceanic ridge system. So, at MAR or the mid Atlantic ridge, development of style of median valley is a cyclic process between the phases of tectonic extension and volcanic reconstruction. What is the cyclic process and this tectonic extension and volcanic reconstruction? If you want to understand here, just uh, if you see, we have this slow spreading ridge, here the magmatic supply is not frequent. Now, for example, we supplied a magma for a particular time and this magma erupted and this total system is cooled down and it is solidified. Now, we are stretching it because it is a rift system with the mid oceanic ridge system, we are stretching it continuously. And once we are stretching the system and another phase of magma is coming out. So, now up to or during this last phase of magmatic supply, this becomes solidified and becomes rigid. Now, the next phase of magmatic eruption that has to break this solidified and rigid system and have to erupt. So, that is why this volcanoes which are erupting by breaking this solidified or the rigid system, they are erupting violently compared to this fast spreading ridges. So, that is why one phase of tectonic extension is there, then magmatic supply is there. So, now the system is solidified. Then another phase of tectonic extension, so magmatic supply is there. So, then the system is cooled and solidified. Then third phase of magmatic supply is there. So, it is a cyclic process. So, the tectonic extension and this mag volcanic reconstruction along this slow spreading ridges, they are in cyclic process occurring. However, at the fast spreading ridges, the magmatic supply is continuous. Magma is continuously being poured out. So, there is no such uh, phenomena of uh, cyclicity is there. Now, the normal faulting 
along the ridge is important for the several reasons. What are these reasons? One is the normal faulting accommodates the fraction of relative plate motion. So, this relative plate motion as we have discussed, suppose for example, this plate is moving from this center point in this way and now we have a normal fault. So, due to this normal faulting, now you see how much distance this block is going back. Similarly, from here this much distance is going back. So, that is why the relative plate velocity along this plate margin, it is somehow it is accommodated by this normal faults. And the relative plate motion along the ridge axis, however, mostly accommodated by, by the intrusion of this seated dikes. Seated dikes layer when we will talk about this uh, uh, lithospheric layers, if you remember we have talked we have a uh, pillow basaltic layer and below this pillow basaltic layer we have seated dikes, seated dikes are nothing they are the fractures which are filled with magma and uh, this through this seated dikes this magma is supplied to the surface. So, most of this relative velocity it is accommodated by this intrusion of seated dikes because once the seated dikes are intruded, so they are expanding the system. The number of seated dikes we are emplacing, so more and more we are expanding the system. So, the relative velocity once we are measuring, it is adding to the system due to expansion. And similarly, at the normal fault, we are expanding, but at the same time, part of the block is retreating back and that is why Due, during the calculation of this uh, relative plate motion, it normal faulting is playing major role. And normal faulting provides pathway for the ocean water to penetrate the crust where it is heated by this high hydrothermal gradient and it is comes along this ridge and forming this VHMS or the volcanogenic massive sulphide deposit. Now, you see this normal faults, they are providing the pathway, this water is going down and after certain depth it is getting heated up and this heated water it is coming up to the surface as hydrothermal solution. And during going to this rock material and coming away from this rock material, it leaches out these minerals from the system. And once this water is coming out and is interacting with the surrounding water, ocean water this EHPH condition changes. So, it is giving rise the mineralization like that Fe, Mn, H2S, H2, CH2, CO2. So, like these gases and some minerals are there. So, mostly the volcanogenic massive sulphide we will discuss in detail during mineralization and plate tectonics. This is the mostly it is found at the mid oceanic ridge system due to this process. In addition to this steeply dipping normal faults found along this ridge axis, low angle normal faults and then the ocean core complexes are also found along this ultra slow and slow spreading ridges. So, what does it mean? So, now you see we are stretching the system. Once we are stretching system with a low angle normal fault as we have discussed, this material which was the asthenospheric material is coming to the surface or near to the surface and exposed along the mediocenic ridge. So, this exposure along this mediocenic ridge are nothing, these are called the amagmatic accretion, not the magmatic accretion. So, that means not due to this magmatic process, this material which was lying below it is coming as melt, but it is coming as a solid material which is due to depressurization this part of this material is coming to this system. So, that is why the ocean core complexes, these are called the ocean core complexes, they are found along the slow and ultra slow spreading ridge and this region being they are emplaced along or due to stretch by the shallow depth normal fault, low angle normal fault. And the segments at the strengths that ends adjacent to the ocean transform faults and that is non-transform accommodation zones. So, the, we have transform fault, we have non-transform accommodation zone that is called fracture zones. Along those zones also these materials are coming out. What is this mechanism? We will talk about we'll, when we will talk about this transform plate boundary. So, oceanic core complexes or the mega mullions are formed by low angle detachment faulting and 
the expose of periodotite upper mantle serpentinized shear zone around this crust. So, this type of stretching on this upper mantle, this type of stretching of the lithosphere, this mantle material that is coming out and they are emplaced along this mediocenic ridge. So, this type of low angle detachment faulting around this ultra slow and slow spreading ridge, they are playing major role for such amagmatic emplacement. Now, you see the diagrammical it is represented here. We have this low angle normal faults and once we are stretching the system, this mental material they are coming out. So, they are exposed here. So, once we are stretching the system, this mental material they are coming out because we are thinning this lithospheric system and there is magmatic emplacement and there is amagmatic emplacement. So, both magmatic and amagmatic emplacement that is responsible for taking this material which was lying below along this mediocenic ridge system. An ultra slow mediocenic ridge accommodates relatively pet motion by magmatic and amagmatic accretion process that we have already discussed what is magmatic and it, what is amagmatic accommodation place and due to this magmatic eruption and amagmatic emplacement both it adds or it influence the relative plate motion because finally the system is stretching. So, once it is stretching and expanding, so that means it is allowing or it is adding a component in the relative plate motion. The mode of accommodation is different from the fast and the slow spreading ridges. At fast spreading ridges, the magmatic supply is more and this relative velocity of the plate is morely contributed by this magmatic emplacement or this seated dike emplacement. However, at the slow and ultra slow spreading ridges, this relative velocity along this plate boundary, it is contributed significantly by this amagmatic emplacement that is the emplacement of this material or the asthenospheric material due to stretching along this low dipping normal faults. Magmatic centers occur along the spreading axis punctuated by the regions of amagmatic accretion where these mental periodotides are emplaced directly to the ridge axis through low angle normal faulting and exhumation. So, this process of coming the lower lying material near to the surface that is called exhumation process. So, exhumation process is one of this important process for crustal evolution. So, this exhumation process in continent it is happening and from this beginning of this earth up to now and in this oceanic system exhumation process mostly occurring at the slow and ultra slow spreading ridges due to the stretching by the low angle normal faults. Amagmatic accretion is specially prevent among the high oblique ultra slow spreading ridge system. If you see here, we have oblique spreading and ultra slow spreading. So, these type of environment are more suitable for this uh, amagmatic accretion and these fast spreading ridges, they are responsible for magmatic accretions. The Gackel ridge is one of the slowest spreading ridges at this mediocenic ridge on this earth that is 1.1 centimeter per annum. So, in that cases or in that places, you can notice the amagmatic emplacement is more dominant. However, if you go to the East Pacific rise, you will get the magmatic emplacement is more dominant. And the Southwest Indian Ocean Ridge and the Gakhel Ridge are the type localities for ultra slow spreading ridge and which is also type areas to study the amagmatic emplacement of this mantle material. So, now the spreading rate across the western volcanic zone, Iceland which is a dying ridge segment is propagating ridge system is around 0 0.8 centimeter per annum and the spreading rate across the Red Sea at the low as 0 0.7 centimeter per annum. So, this type of slow spreading ridges systems where this amagmatic emplacement can be studied. And either it is slow spreading ridge or fast spreading ridge, but the common feature of this fast and ultra fast spreading ridge are there, it is the overlapping spreading center and the propagating ridge system. What is this overlapping spreading center that is called OCS and the propagating ridge that it will take another class for that. But overlapping ridges 
occur at a number of scales, but could eventually lead to the formation of microplates. And this microplates, for example, that the Easter plate and Juan Fernandez plate, these are the microplates, and with time they are accommodated with the larger plate which is near to it. So, if you see here, this is the Easter plate and this is Juan Fernandez plate. It once upon a time it was a part of this plate and now it become this plate and this become independent. Probably in geological future they may be accommodated by some plate either here and here depending upon the rate of spreading and the propagation of the ridge surrounding to it. This much for this today's class. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next class.